So these are my 16 CLs, Elmo 16 CLs. You can see there's quite a few. Um, the one that's sitting sideways over here, that one is a parts machine. But the other ones, um, the other six, um, one of them is a, uh, actually the uh, one in the back corner over there is a uh, Kodak. But they're, but they're all the same type of mechanism. But, um, but this one over here, he's real dusty and dirty. I don't know what his status is. I'm not really sure. A couple of them have been worked on. But that one there in particular, I don't know much about it, so I'm going to take that one out and take a look at him. Okay, so this is the Elmo 16 CL that I randomly pulled out because it was dirty. I, I figured it, if it's been dirty, it probably hasn't been used for a while, so. Okay, so first thing is, covers come off pretty easy. Let's see all this up inside, and uh, we'll do a close-up of some of that stuff. Okay, the arm pulls up out of the way. Um, you also notice that this one in particular has got like a broken fin. So if I have a better one, I'll use another one if I have anything on my parts machine. But we're going to undo the little screw here. And that will reveal the bulb. And you're not supposed to touch those with your fingers. So if you use gloves or some other method of holding them. But I'm just going to show that. Um, sometimes in the back of these cases, there's a an extra bulb sits right in there, but this one doesn't have one. So I don't have a spare bulb for this one. It does have all of its fuses, spare fuses here. Um, then down here is the exciter bulb right here. And uh, and then the other thing about this one is is that I noticed was is that one of the screws let's see is actually that holds on this front panel right there. It is obstructed by the by the roller, so that wants to the screws that holds up on that lower panel. I've got other ones of these, and they don't work that way. They're different than this. They have uh, they're easier to take off actually. So we'll have to do that. We've got to take that off, and, um, and so I'll we'll take off that roller before we can take off the rest of it. Okay, so we're going to take out this screw here. It's holding this roller on. So right below it, there is a screw. There it is. And we'll go right to that one. We should be able to get it in there and pop it out. So the screw has been removed right there. And uh, we'll get the one on the bottom. This is the one on the bottom. He's easier. A lot easier to get out. Take off these knobs, which luckily just pull off. And we still have one other little contention, and that's the handle right there. Now these take a 2.5 millimeter uh, Allen wrench. And the way you get them out is just to put it down through the center here. And you twist it once you get it in there. It doesn't take much and the thing just pops right off. Then you pull off the front front panel up there. And this whole thing, now there should be no screws in the screw somewhere. Let's take a look and see where that's at. And there's one more screw we forgot. We'll get that off. Now the cover should come right off. It did. All right, now we can get to all the rollers and check them out. So now we can take a look and see the whole path. Um, so you've got you got rollers at different spots, and these are notorious for going bad. You can put your finger on them sometimes, and your finger will come up with black all over it. Now these are actually okay. So the rollers in this in this projector don't feel terrible. Um, so I'm just going to kind of feel all of them. Make sure that there's no really bad ones. And uh, it's looking like this is just, other than being dirty, um, which it really is very dirty, I think it's not, doesn't look bad inside. 
I don't see anything obvious causing me pro that would cause me some problems, but this is what we've got to work with right now. So I'm gonna get this cleaned up. I plan to do that with some some air. So we'll work that out a little bit. You really can't tell how dirty it is until you get a nice put a nice bright light on it and then just start looking around. It is super dirty. I don't know where it's been, but it's been, it's pretty dirty. So yeah, it's been it's been it's been left in bad places. I think I don't know. Maybe me. I don't know. Who knows? I mean, because all right, where I left, where I had I had it in the garage in the basement for a while, along with other other projectors. So it's been in storage for a while. So it definitely picked up a bunch of dirt. So we gotta get that all cleaned out. That just that is not even close to acceptable. And we'll do some lubrication as well while we're here. So that's what we'll do. That's what I plan to do. And we'll look, we gotta try to look in the back now, see what that looks like. So here we are in the back. Um, you got the. Uh, it's neat, neat how they set this up. So they set it up so you can adjust the voltage of it. So you can see it's actually set for 120, which is, you know, US. Um, and you set it down to 100 volts, which is a Japan standard, incidentally. I don't see whether it does does 220, but maybe there's a way of doing it. There is a thing about, uh, looks like a belt placement for 50 hertz or 60 hertz over here on this uh, sticker back here. So that's interesting. So that would be the probably with a, moving the belt to a different position because it's in the 60 hertz range right now. Looking down inside there. So I don't know if I can see it from where, I'm, where you guys are at. Find it in the camera. You can see it's on that it's on the left pulley. So it's 60 hertz. So yeah, not a lot to see here, unfortunately. But um, circuit board down there. Assuming it's the sound, something to do with the sound. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's it so far. That's what we look at. It's actually actually pretty clean back here. Actually, I saw a little bit of dust, but you know, it'd be good to have the cover open so I can get stuff out of it, you know, blow stuff out of it. Okay, so the inside here, this is the gate. And this is what this is where the film path runs through, and then what happens is when the uh, when you me mechanically it goes in and closes up the gate and um, starts to engage all the all the rollers and things like that against the film. So this whole thing comes out. You push on this little lever up top there. You see, there's a little 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 like a spring, and the whole thing folds back and then pulls out, and you got the whole thing right there. And this is where you can clean, get back in there and clean easy. Another thing too you can do is you can pull out the pull out this 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 spring loaded and then the whole lens will come right out. I'm doing it with one hand because I'm holding the light at the same time. The whole lens will pull right out. Hey, great demonstration. Okay, whatever. That would have been. Been a lot easier if I had just uh, moved this bar out of the way, but but yeah, that's how the lens comes out. So just and it goes back in just the same way. You just pull the pull the pull the button out, and it just slides right in and out. That's how you get the lens out, so you can clean the lens. You go in there and get some of that dust off of it. And now the whole path here is all cleared out, so we can get our get up in there and. You can see we can get in there. We can get to get some light in there. So we can get up inside there now and make all, clean up all inside this this lens here, the lens cable, and we get it all to the back plate and uh, get all this cleaned out, looking nice and new. So that's how that's what we're going to do. We're going to go in there and fix all that up. So the next fun thing we're going to do is we're going to take this clip off here, and that'll get this roller here off, and um, this roller right here that. It's a reverse roller. Now, if you're changing the rollers on this, you'd need to take this off. So, um, we're not, but this, this is one thing we are going to do just so we can get beyond there and get some get some cleaning done. So, we're just going to put it... What, we, what we're going to do is just put a, put a screwdriver in here and you just twist it and the clip just will snap. 
come right off. You see there's the clip. And then we can just lift up on this whole bar. Pull it right off. And you leave it leave it attached to the spring. I just want to get behind it. And we're going to do some lubrication as well in a little bit. I just lubrication on some of these rollers and things. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pull off the rest of the rollers. And again, they all look like they're in pretty good shape. And uh, we're going to determine uh, what we do from there. Now this roller here, this silver one, silver top one, this flange roller, that has got to be removed with a little scoop, with a little nut driver. I'm using a ratchet, but same exact thing. And for some reason, this one, I couldn't find an equivalent in metric. It was 7 16th. And uh, it just comes right off. And this is the roller that's on the uh, on the pivot thing. And you can see that's how you would take that one off. Is there's uh, another one of those little clips around the back. Actually, this thing uses a, yeah, there's a little clip right there. And uh, that clip right there, just take that clip off, and you would, uh, the roller comes right off. If we remove these two screws off this cover, the cover comes off, and then we can actually look and see what uh, the technology is inside of here. Now, what I mean by that is, is that they made two different ones of these. They made one that had a um, smooth surface on here, and it was actually like a rubberized surface that the belt rode on. And then they had the second one, which uses a belt that has um, has has uh, grooves on it. And then basically the it rides in the gear like a gearing system. So this is the best one of the, ha the two to have. And you can actually get a kit to change from the other style to this style on on most of these. So we're going to leave it just like it is because it's in good shape. Also check the belt for being um, having some flexibility to it, and it's always and it's all in the right places on the on the cogs but yeah this is in good shape we can just leave this one the way it is and uh, we'll move on to other things and we're back well it's been an interesting couple of days since the last time you saw the shot I took before um, it was a very dirty machine and um, I figured out why it was dirty it was the first machine I bought I bought it in the 90s um, I don't remember the conditions I think it was an eBay purchase but I don't really remember exactly but I bought it in the 90s so it's been around for a while I've had this machine for you know a good 20 years you know 20 plus years so um, so it got dirty over that time and it, and it got put aside and it was originally to replace the, the first 16 millimeter I had which was an EIK e -I, I don't even know how you say that but but it was like an EIK one of those and it was a slot load as well um, so I did a lot of cleaning up on it, and um, to do that, I used a toothbrush. Uh, not a toothbrush. This is a uh, paintbrush. I used a little paintbrush, and I got in, and I just pulled all the dirt out. Now, why would I do that? First thing was is that um, you can control it better. Okay, there was a lot of hair and other dirt and other debris in there, and it was really, really weird. So I did that. I got it all out. Another thing that was interesting, and I, oh yeah, I put all the parts. Um, when you're done working, you put all the parts that you took off. And you put them into a bag. Put them into a bag. Make sure they don't get anywhere. Good with those little C clips too. They they go. They'll disappear completely on you. But um, this was originally from a school, and I found a piece of crayon in there. So there's a little crayon in there, brown. And um, I don't know how it got inside the machine, but it was from a school. So um, that's how it got in there. So that was that was interesting. Interesting finding the machine. Other than that, nothing else that was really weird, um, but, but a bunch of dirt, dirt and hair. Um, and then that was the first thing I did, and then I used a can of air after that. So I used the spray can here. Now, I also have a compressor in the basement. I would use that. This was um, one of those things. I found this can of air and said to myself, hey, I can do this, and it'd be faster and easier. So I used the can of air and blew out all the rest of the dirt. Um, took the back of it off, too, and... Um, I hadn't actually run the power on it yet, so I took the back of it off to make sure it wasn't too dirty. And it wasn't bad, but I used the air, and I went through it again, and uh, it came out, you know, pretty nice and clean. I mean, it looks really good. I mean, I think it looks great. Now, one other thing um, with these projectors is, is that there is places where you want to do, especially like the rollers and things like that, 
Um, you want to put oil on those to get them lubricated again. I also use um, I use three three in one. Um, I use this three in one silicone oil. There, better if you hold it so you, people can see it. It's a silicone oil. I use that on all the um, all the uh, rollers, and I use a super lube. Um, I get this at Harbor Freight. This is actually a Teflon based lubricant, lubricant. and uh, I use this on any of my other moving parts. Now um, I will be showing this later on when we get back to putting this thing back together again. So left us to a little problem. So. So I got some bad news for you. Um, this video is going to end short. In fact, you're going to see a few more things and pretty much it's done. And you'll be seeing the finishing of it later. Now, the reason I'm going to explain that is, is that um, Elmo's are notorious, absolutely notorious, for the rubber on these rubber on these rubber rollers to go bad. And when it goes bad, it turns into a sticky, gooey mess. And um, these are actually not that bad. I, I have much worse. I have much worse than this. Um, but they uh, turn into a sticky, gooey mess, and I'm trying to find the one. One of these was worse than the others. I could, one of them I could rub across my fingers and leave a mark because it was wearing down. But it seems like it's, being, it's behaving now. But um, I don't want to put these rollers back on it. Um, I just don't want to do it. I, I, I think they're, they just feel too... Like they're about ready to go, and when they go, they will. I have I have a couple of films that were I wouldn't say ruined, but they need to be extensively cleaned to get them back to where they need to be because of the rubber rollers. I didn't pay attention to what I was doing. Threaded through a projector I hadn't run for a while, and found out that they had gone bad. So um, these are all available from Urbanski uh, Film, and um, he does an exchange on these. So you have to put a deposit in when you send them in. And, and then you send these back after you get your new rollers in the mail. You swap them out. You send these back to him and he gives you back your, your the deposit money you put in towards them. So it's a really good deal. And uh, it's something, you know, it's, a, it's the only way right now to get really good, high quality um, rollers. He does a really beautiful job on reproducing them um, using the original cores. So, definite plug for the man. He does a great job. He's doing it for our, for our uh, hobby and for uh, enthusiasts around the world. Okay, so now what happened next? Okay, so I decided it's time to plug it in. So I was going to plug it in live on the video, and that would have been been better, I think, because you would able to see what happened. So I plugged it in, and I turned on the lamp for the sound exciter bulb. And when I did, it worked. It came up and looked great. Um, took a piece of film, because all the rollers are out of it, I can't really run, you know, through the... I can't really run anything through the... Uh, to the projector because right now all, all the rollers are out of it so it'll just destroy the film. So I took, took my test film and I rolled it back a little bit and it's got soundtrack right at the beginning of the film. It's actually like a music track. And um, I ran it um, and this is actually a clip from Laurel and Hardy's We Fall Down. And um, that is one film I can't find. So so if anybody's got a copy and wants a, wants a part with it, I'm looking for that one. But at any rate, um, this is the this is a very high contrast, really not the best quality version of that film, and it's been my test film for a long time, so I like I like using it for that because I know what it looks like. So, um, anyway, I ran the film past the sound head, and I heard noise. So that's a good sign. It didn't sound great because it was being run by hand, but it, you know it worked out great. So I figured, okay, that's great. So I know I got sound. I look over, and that light shut off. Just like that. Turn off by itself. I was like, that doesn't make any sense. So I was like, probably the bulb. Well, truthfully, it's probably not the bulb. Unfortunately, these bulbs are really good, fortunate for me, uh, not for anybody else, but the bulbs are really are really strong. They last many, many, many years usually. So the chances of it being the bulb were low. And I tested the bulb. And how you do that, there's a lot of ways of testing a bulb, but the, the best way is to test it with a meter. So if you've got a, got a multimeter, um, you can set it on the beep test, and when, the, when you hook up to a, to a bulb, it'll make a beepy noise. You just put it on both contacts, the outside contact, the other one, and you'll get your beepy noise. So, um, so I did that, and that, that proved the bulb was good. So the next step was to test the fuse, because there is an exciter light lamp fuse in the back. 
pulled the fuse out, tested it with the meter, the fuse is good too. So that means that the problem is someplace else. So I got a hold of the, uh, I decided that okay, well it's got to be, there's got to be something in the schematics. So I got a hold of the, of the, of the schematics and um, I went through and I noticed that, um, and I'll, I noticed that there were some, some other parts to the circuit that I was surprised to see. Um, and for just for grins, I went, and you might see in the background back there, let's see, there it is. In the background, you see there's another projector sitting back there. Well, that's my parts machine. I used, I used it when I had some problems with the spindle in the back on another projector going bad. And I may, actually, it's probably this one. I took some parts off of it. Um, so I'm borrowing parts from that to do on this one. So I figured, okay, the smart thing to do is let's pull the soundboard out and replace it with the other one. Now, I plugged it in. It was still, still good enough to turn it on. Um, it actually has got a lot of problems in the gearing for the, for the drive mechanism. So I can't actually turn the handle anymore. It's, it's, all, it's all jammed up. But this board, of course, this has got its own power, power thing. This is the board that goes through. This is your volume control here and your tone control. And you, you spin the little one and it clicks and it gives you your volume. So um, I took the board out of that, threw it into here, um, which it, I made sure the pins were all compatible because the, the boards were different layouts. Um, there's more, much more components on the one I put in than the, than the one I took out. So there's actually this whole section here. Is, is, it just looks different. It's totally different. It's got more parts to it than the, on the other one. So um, I, I went and looked, looked, through, looked through this and took that one out and put that one in. Everything's working great. I got sound. I hear noise um, from from the, from the amplifier. I mean, everything seems like it's running. So and the light comes on, which it didn't before. So that means there's something wrong with this. Now another video. I'm going to go through this. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to figure out what's wrong with it because apparently I've got another projector in the other room, which I did test a while ago when I first got it, and it's got the same problem. Um, it's got no sound, and it's from the exciter light not coming on. Satellite lamp is not a very complicated circuit, so I'll be going through that in a separate video, talking how to do, how to fix this. Um, I assume you can probably buy these that, that would function. I, I'll bet there is a way of getting a hold of a new one of these that works. But the um, reality of it is, is that this is not very complicated. Okay, the exciter lamp circuit is really simple. So there's only a limited number of parts. Now, can I get the parts? That's another question. It is a bridge rectifier. It's my first thought is a bridge rectifier. Now, you don't know what that does. That's a device inside of electronic components that turns AC to DC or DC to AC. So that's, that's what's turning the, you know, the signal from being like the car, kind of signal you have, uh, power you have in your battery in your car versus the kind you plug into your wall. So, um, so that might be the problem. Might be the problem. I've seen that that's a common problem with other devices that I work on. I'm known for working on pinball machines. So, um, yeah, so that's what it could be, um, but it's known to happen on those, and that would definitely work that way. Also, these capacitors here, these capacitors are at least 20, 20 25 years old, I'm guessing, so I, I, the, I can't imagine that it couldn't be those two, because those capacitors, and there's not many in that circuit, so um, it's common to do, um, to change those kind of things out anyway. Um, it's called um, recapping the uh, board. So, I'm thinking is um, bridge rectifier, cap capacitors, and then test resistors to see if the resistors are still holding their values. And I think we got it. Uh, I think we'll have it, fig we'll have it figured out because there's not much more than that. Um, I think there's one transistor in the whole lot. We can check that as well. That can be tested as well. So another video. See how to fix. See hopefully how to fix this board. That's we. That'll be my goal anyway. So for now, I'm going to say it's over. Um, yeah, I'm going to say we're done. Um, because I, I don't have rollers, um, so I'm going to need to get the new rollers from Larry, and um, not in the budget for this week. So we're going to get, we're going to put those, uh, get those rollers ordered, and um, we'll come back and we'll do another video on the reassembly of the machine, and we'll do a separate video on the board repair, which we, which we'll, we'll carry separately. So look forward to two more videos, two more. We're going to have two more videos on this on this particular projector. Which it really does when it kind of turns on. It's a very strong motor. Sounds great. All the all the um, mechanics on it seem very very good. So it's definitely worth the restoration, and um, and I think we're going to have a really nice projector. So that's it. This is it. Thank you for watching, and um, we'll come back with a lot more 
detailed stuff on how to fix how we fix this machine, and um, and we'll, we'll see. And then we'll only have five more to go, five more machines. That's all it's going to take. And the TRV-16, which I've gotten mostly working, which is a, a video converter that Elmo made. So uh, we'll be talking about that one as well. So that's the seventh. So we'll talk about that at some point. Okay, so here we are. This is what I'm going to say. So this is first third of machine one. All done. Thanks for watching.